as a rule, MMOs or RPGs or what I refer to as a lifestyle game has always been very fascinating to me. Games like the Diablo series, The Division, Destiny, or World of Warcraft all hold a very special place in my heart. With World of Warcraft being one of my first entries into the MMORPG genre, I didn't really know what to expect back then, but the story and the visuals and the class-based combat were pretty much unlike anything I had ever seen before. The game was difficult and engaging. Nowadays, it certainly shows signs of its age, but the experience is still completely authentic and 100% unique. During my very good time playing World of Warcraft, I remember hearing about the announcement of Final Fantasy XIV, a new MMO that was entering the scene. But uh, we all remember how that launch went. It was failure, and we announced a failure. It's the tenth time I've said sorry in this one post. <laughs> I never got a chance to play 1.0, the original release of Final Fantasy XIV, but when they announced the re-release under a Realm Reborn moniker, I decided to dive into the new experience all over again. At the time, I was an avid World of Warcraft player, and when a Realm Reborn released, I bounced back and forth between the two pretty regularly, unsure of what to think about this new entry. I knew that I loved the combat system, I loved the classes, or jobs as they're called in this game, and the story was unlike anything I had ever experienced in an MMO. Over time, it began to feel like a more refined and more interesting version of the World of Warcraft experience, and there are certainly parallels between the two games. Things you'll find in common are dungeon finders, raids, party-based content, open world exploration and quests, and of course so much more. And by no secret at all, Final Fantasy is definitely influenced by WoW's style. But these similarities don't do much to hurt the experience of 14 at all. They really make it clear why I would rather play 14 than World of Warcraft. But why? Why choose Final Fantasy over the more established game? one that I had already sunk hundreds of hours into, leveling every class to max and maxing out professions and more. Why leave it all behind? Final Fantasy XIV is strong for a lot of reasons, but I'm going to highlight five in particular in this video. And those five are the story content, the job fantasy and design, the combat system, the music and sound design, and the oh so important X factor. This is probably going to be a pretty long video, but the game has made a very dedicated fan out of me and many more, so I feel like I owe this explanation some justice. Final Fantasy XIV may be an MMO, but it's still a Final Fantasy game before it is anything else. This has a lot of implications, and a lot of these do hold up surprisingly well. Despite the atypical format compared to the rest of the series, a very heavy emphasis is placed on the story of Final Fantasy XIV and its three expansion packs. The first time I went through the level 1 to level 50 experience through A Realm Reborn, I enjoyed it as it flows pretty naturally with the rest of the story as it goes. But a lot of people, especially new players coming into the game now, nearly six years later, cite this initial phase as something that really hinders their experience. I can understand that complaint, especially if you're coming from a game like World of Warcraft where the only barrier for entry to expansion content is just your character's level. Being forced to complete one expansion's content and its patches in its entirety before you can jump over to the next one is probably pretty jarring. You're making me very uncomfortable. Please leave. Please leave. It's either very positive or extremely negative. It seems to depend a lot on the type of content that you enjoy. If you like a bombastic, explosive story experience with a lot of moving pieces and characters, you'll probably find yourself enjoying it. But if you just like to burn through a game and reach endgame content as fast as you can, you may feel that it drags on a bit. Once you finally do get through A Realm Reborn's content and all of its patches, you hit Heavensward, Final Fantasy's first expansion pack. Most players, including myself, agree that this is where the story hits its stride. 
Heaven's Word is a gripping experience and even now stands strong enough to be worth the price of a mainline Final Fantasy release all on its lonesome. It consistently ramps itself up into the finale, and it's probably one of the most memorable moments of Final Fantasy story I've ever experienced. Stormblood, the second expansion, is very well done. It ramps up a bit slower than Heavensward though, so it does feel a little long-winded in the previous earlier beats. By the end though, Stormblood very closely resembles Heavensward in both storytelling and overall quality. Shadowbringers, the game's third and most recent expansion pack, takes the story in a very different direction, literally taking place on another world inside of the Final Fantasy universe. World of Warcraft players, you can kind of draw similarities between the Outland and Draenor as I explain this here. Your uncertainty is understandable given the circumstances. Perhaps a more detailed explanation is in order. To begin at the beginning, Shadowbringers takes place on the first, a reflection of the world that we live on called the Source. Thousands of years ago, two gods, Hydaelyn and Zodiark, representations of light and dark themselves, existed together in relative balance. Eventually though, Zodiark began to crave more power, and Hydaelyn cast him out of their shared existence. This caused a massive dimensional cataclysm called the Sundering. This reflected the source 13 times, creating 14 worlds in total, 13 of which are alternate versions of our world that we now call shards. On our world, the source, all of the elements exist in a relative balance, keeping everything pretty normal for the most part. However, seven times in the past, a huge imbalance in the elements on a shard has caused an extinction level event called a calamity. These calamities are so disastrous that Hydaelyn's only option to save the source is to absorb the dying shard back into it. This has lasting effects on the source, however, and of course completely destroys the shard in the process. In the world of the first, where Shadowbringers takes place, the balance has been tipped in the favor of light, causing all darkness, even the very night sky itself, to disappear. We become a force for darkness, the warrior of darkness to be exact, and attempt to rebalance the scales to save the world from its calamity, which would also damage our world, the source, when the dying shard reconjoins with its original home. As you can see, the game has a very deep and potent lore, and all of the setup was put in place all the way back in the original 1 to 50 experience through the main story quest line of A Realm Reborn. This is why I always advise new players to try and battle through the story their first time through, but if you really can't stand it, the option to skip the story is there. It does cost real money though, so you'll have to decide if your time is worth the amount of cash that you'll have to shell out. I'd rather experience the game at its fullest, even if it does drag a tiny bit in the first act. Like most MMOs, Final Fantasy XIV's classes are broken up into three primary roles, tanks, healers, and DPS. In the game at current, there are four tanks, three healers, and ten plus one DPS, and that'll make sense, I promise. The jobs in Final Fantasy are divided by the weapon that they wield, so each class has its own unique weapon set that is used exclusively by it. Here's my best attempt at explaining each job in the game using only one sentence. For tanks, we have Paladin, the standard sword and board style tank that uses holy magic to heal allies and deal damage to its enemies. Warrior, a barbarian tank that uses two-handed axes and mitigates damage through healing with on-hit skills. Dark Knight, added in Heaven's Word, is a two-handed sword tank that specializes in mitigating magic damage and being as edgy and hot topic as physically possible. 
and Gunbreaker added in Shadowbringers, a utility tank that uses a wide range of skills to fit the mold of any fight. For healers, we have White Mage, your standard cleric or priest style that uses pure healing magic output with some damage skills here and there. Scholar, a healer that uses mostly shields and its pet fairies to keep teammates alive and well. And Astrologian, added in Heavensward, heals through the use of time-reversing magic and special cards that buff friends. For melee physical DPS, we have Dragoon, a lance-wielding attacker that uses jumps in their inner dragon to deal big damage. Monk, a hand-to-hand -hand fighter that dances around their target gracefully using flashy and flowing combos that ramp up in speed with every finisher. Ninja, a Far Eastern fighter who weaves hand signs to cast powerful ninjutsu and uses daggers or knives to deal damage. And Samurai, added in Stormblood, this attacker deals heavy damage with flashy, extremely potent skills but lacks a lot of utility. For ranged physical DPS, we have Bard, an archer who uses its magical songs to both damage and debuff enemies while buffing allies. Machinist, added in Heaven's Word, who uses firearms and a bunch of turrets and tools to damage their enemies, including a massive automaton. And Dancer, added in Shadowbringers, deals low personal DPS but keeps its buffs on party members to keep them at their top power and has a lot of clutch skills that can save you in a time of crisis. For magical DPS, we have the Black Mage, a pure magic damage caster and the one that uses fire and ice to deal extremely high damage. The Red Mage, a hybrid melee and caster DPS class that uses its mastery of both black and white magic to build up to their melee combo, which allows them access to their most powerful spells. Summoner, the only true pet class in the game, they are casters that call down manifestations of the elements and use damage over time spells to burn their enemies to the ground. And then there's also Blue Mage, the so-called limited job and plus one I mentioned earlier. Blue Mage cannot participate in standard content through traditional means, but it has its own unique crafted endgame tailored and made specifically just for it. You also have to collect your spells from enemies in the open world, and filling up your blue magic spellbook is a satisfying collectathon. There are also eight playable races to choose from when creating your character. Anyone who's played Final Fantasy XI or really most MMOs should recognize a lot of these. There's Hire, your prototypical humans, Elizin, essentially filling in for elves, Mikote, a race of cat like people, Rogadin, a large seafaring race. The Lalafell, which are a small race that fill in for your typical dwarf or gnome. The Ara, added in Heaven's Word, are a race of dragon-like people with horns and scales. Hrothgar, a male exclusive race at the time, of large lion-like men. These are similar to the Ronso from Final Fantasy X if you're familiar. And the Viera, a currently female exclusive race of rabbit people originally introduced in Final Fantasy XII. Where 14 shines is here in its job system and its design. Not all of them are exactly perfect and the balance certainly isn't 100%, but every job feels very solid, with each one feeling completely unique, with playstyles wide enough to catch every type of player. If you want to mix it up, it's no big deal, just switch weapons. No need to make a new character, sit through an opening cutscene, and redo a bunch of content you've already gone through just to switch back and forth at the end of every week to do your in-game raids. One character can level every single job in the game, including the crafters and gatherers, which while not being my specific interest, boast an extreme death of their own right, and have fantasies that run deep into the game's systems. This makes it way less intimidating for new playstyles to be explored and for players to interact with the world in many more ways. Final Fantasy does have one major criticism that I can see a lot of validity in. The combat feels extremely slow when the game first starts. 14 uses a combo-based combat system where your skills will feed into each other and often give you special effects or increased damage as you do this. Because of this, when you first start and you only have one or two skills, the game feels very sluggish. This is always a sticking point, especially for WoW players, but I can promise you the game explodes as you level up and gain more abilities. The global cooldown is also much longer than most MMOs at a staggering 2.5 seconds at level 1, and while this can be reduced later on in the game, it definitely feels long for most of your experience. 
This forces a space between using skills that are on the global cooldown. Now, of course, there are skills that are off the global cooldown, and these skills can be placed between every use of a skill that is on the global cooldown, a practice that is commonly called skill or spell weaving. Essentially, you use your initiator, and in the two and a half second window that exists before you can hit the second part of your combo, you use an off global cooldown ability to fill that gap. Some classes have a lot of these and some have almost none, but some classes like the Samurai get to the point where as long as you're managing your resources, you can use an OGCD skill between nearly every single GCD cast. Enemies have your normal standard attacks, with auto attacks usually targeting tanks, targeted abilities that will hit randomized party members or specific party members, and raid-wide AoE attacks. An extra bonus with 14 is that unlike other MMOs, bosses also have attacks that have large telegraphed markers, either through yellow cones on the ground or through the boss's own actual behavior. I think Terra has a system that's not too dissimilar from this, but no other mainline MMO brings this level of accountability in my experience. For a lot of boss fights, assuming you're not tanking, you can avoid almost 100% of the damage they deal if you know the fight and can dodge the mechanics correctly. Some stuff is completely unavoidable, like raid-wide AoE attacks or large phase transition attacks that are designed to push your healers, but it's potentially the only damage you could take in an entire fight if you know what you're doing. Speaking of fights, 14 has a lot of content, especially with different types and different styles and ways to attack that content. Open world exploration, main story quests, side quests, fates, which are live action events, dungeons, raids, trials, hunting logs, notorious monster hunts, lev quests, grand company squadron quests, arena PvP, battleground PvP, crafting, gathering, treasure maps, and so much more. The game just has a lot to do. A lot of the content also has multiple levels of difficulty, with things like trials where parties fight a single super powerful boss having both normal, hard, and extreme level difficulties in some cases. A lot of dungeons have a hard mode where most of the content can be repeated, and you don't even have to worry about using your lower level characters if you are leveling with a friend, for instance. Because the game has a level sync system which will automatically bring your character and your gear down to an appropriate level for whatever content you're working through. Most of the content in the game, like dungeons and trials, are completed in either 4 or 8 player parties. These consist of 1 healer, 1 tank, and 2 DPS, or 2 tanks, 2 healers, and 4 DPS. There are also Alliance Raids, the largest and in my opinion the most spectacular content in this game, which are completed in 24 player alliances, three groups of eight. Content consistently ramps up in complexity and difficulty from level 1 to level 80, with a lot of the in-game content requiring extremely coordinated groups to clear, where a single mistake could mean nearly instant death. Savage raids, for instance, are definitely made for only the top tier players of this game, but I would think that everyone can agree that a great way to describe the content of Final Fantasy XIV is punishing but fair. As long as you understand the mechanics and play your role in the fight, you can overcome almost any hurdle. Final Fantasy as a series has always had fantastic music, and fourteen is certainly no exception. A lot of the music in A Realm Reborn, Heaven's Word, and Stormblood was great, but in Shadowbringers, composer Masayoshi Soken tried something very, very different, and it definitely nails it on the head. The music in this game is so great that it blows my mind every time I hear it. Music always matches up to the visuals too, invoking feelings ranging from excitement and dread to whimsy and frankly many many more. 
I think my favorite track of the new expansion is the music that plays during the daytime in the new Ill Meg area. This part of the world is home to a race of pixies and is a magical and whimsical place, and the music reflects it extremely well. As we've gotten further into the game's life cycle, voice acting is becoming much more common as well, to the point where nearly every cutscene of Shadowbringers was either fully or partially voice acted. A small note I'd like to commend the developers on here is the observance to the consistency of lore in the universe. Where they were introduced in Final Fantasy XII, Viera had a Scandinavian influence accent. Do not do this. You must remain away from the Humes. Stay with the wood. Live together with the wood. This is your way. With Viera being introduced at the end of Stormblood through the main story and playing a much larger part in Shadowbringers, their voice actors stick to the Scandinavian lean, which lends a sense of continued lore and universe that other MMOs just kind of don't have. of the Crystarium Stranger, and I am its gatekeeper. If you would enter, you will answer my questions. On top of this, the voice direction in the game is really, really excellent, with every scene with voice acting feeling and sounding pretty genuine, making it hard to remember that I'm not only playing a video game, but an MMO at that. Audio design for actions and skills and spells sounds extremely good as well, with each class having such a distinct sound that you could probably identify them blindfolded after you know them well enough. Just listening to their abilities going off will instantly tell you what's going on. Classes like the Dark Knight have deep and heavy attacks that feel crunchy and impactful. while classes like the ninja have delicate and fast attacks that feel precise and deadly. The sound design bleeds into the visuals so well that it's very easy to lose yourself in the fantasy of these classes, letting their designs completely immerse you in the experience. Final Fantasy XIV has one more thing going for it, but something that you can't quite put your brain's weird little finger on. There's something about this game that allows it to engage with you at a level that other MMOs just never have for me. It perfectly balances this desire to play with the freedom to step away if you really need to. There are daily and weekly challenges for you to complete, but none of them feel so impactful that you'll sacrifice your progression if you have to take a day off for work or school or other obligations. There's a great design here with excellent combat, heavily refined systems and graphics and sounds that would give any modern AAA title a run for its money, especially when you're comparing it to other MMOs that are its direct competition. A staggering number of people are fluttering into this game with the release of Shadowbringers, and I haven't heard a single bad review about the expansion yet. There's also a huge advantage that Final Fantasy XIV has over other MMOs, and that's the community. Final Fantasy players are generally the most helpful, kind, and easy to work with players in nearly any online experience I've ever had. I can't tell you how many times during my tenure playing World of Warcraft, I would have players instantly rage quit a piece of content just because one thing goes wrong. DPS forgot a mechanic and died, quit. Tank can't hold aggro perfectly 100% of the time, quit. Your healer's dog threw up on his keyboard and you died mid fight, make sure to call him gay and then quit. But players in Final Fantasy are generally and overwhelmingly positive. 
and I've only experienced players rage quitting out of content like this maybe five or six times since I started playing the game nearly six years ago. Players are more than happy to give advice, help you understand your class's rotations, or even just have a friendly conversation. Players are always excited to learn more about their job and how to min-max them at every turn, and every person I've ever met that plays this game regularly has never told me they're bored or giving up because they're burnt out on dailies or repeating raids because they have to get that perfect Titanforge piece of gear. Theory crafters abound, and pretty much every person that participates in the community actively continues to push the game to its limits, and it constantly surprises me how kind and genuine and how heavy the commitment is of the community to provide an awesome experience in this very expansive and well-realized world. All in all, Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers is a great experience, and that expansion just added on to a cake that was already very well made. A level of polish and competence on display here consistently wows me, and the developer's adherence to delivering a very high quality experience will keep me coming for sure. It makes me extremely excited to see what else is up their sleeve, since every new expansion brings content, worlds, and new jobs, and while the developers have said that they probably won't add any more new races due to the development difficulties of doing that, I'm satisfied with the diversity of the eight races that are present now. Final Fantasy is a satisfying and well-done adventure, from the graphics to the sound design to the dungeons and raids, everything in this game oozes quality and screams an insane level of polish. Almost every part of this game feels like a more refined version of previous MMO experiences, basically building on the blocks that other games have done. EverQuest crawled so that Final Fantasy XI could walk. Eleven walked so that World of Warcraft could run, and WoW ran so that Final Fantasy XIV could take off into the stratosphere and blow every pair of socks that anyone has ever owned off of their feet.